Jeremy, the reason that you're not dressed like a bear today is you forgot because you lost at the grid of death and today you were supposed to be dressed like a bear? Gross negligence, Dan. Okay, so you simply forgot. You you forgot to do your job. Uh, you were supposed to come in here today. What are you shaking your head about, Billy? I gave him a pass on it as the one that rules over the mm-hmm. grip that, death and bucket of He death. didn't forget to do the sideline game for the heat last night. That's interesting. Wow. For his other job? What are we doing? <laughs> I'm just saying, if they had asked you to dress like a bear, my guess is that you would not have forgotten to do it. I think uh, I think uh, the the iron fist of Billy, who is giving <laughs> passes, as has been giving passes since last year, Billy has no control over this, and nobody oh. does their job the way no. they're supposed to around here. No, no, no. Dan, I will say this. I was supposed to dress as mankind this week as a punishment, but that was a simple situation where it hasn't arrived yet. So things are getting paid off. It's just if the causes aren't getting here, the whole thing. There's a helmet over there for you to wear. I am uh, of the opinion, I've been told, that Lucy served a grid of death punishment this weekend. What is the helmet that's out there for me? Is it an F1 helmet? I've got to dress like an F1 driver. Yeah, you have to dress as an F1 driver, so they ordered you an F1 helmet, which looks very tight. Excellent. It looks like it's going to be very uncomfortable. I don't know how you're going to get headphones, headphones in there. On yeah, it, it yeah, seems not, yeah. not well. These you are chose all, it. I these mean. are all harder. These are always harder than you think they are. How, uh, before we get to this video of Lucy eating fried food in Texas, what was the worst of it, Lucy, of all the food that you ate this weekend that was evidently also a grid of death punishment? The fried fireball shot. Yeah. Woof. Everyone, I did it. Everyone tweeted at me, said, Lucy, please do it. I said, for you guys, anything. Well, yeah. let me tell you, Bye. I don't want to spoil it very misleading made my stomach hurt a lot did not enjoy that wow. and you'll get a fun little story too wow. <laughs> all right that's a teaser there we will folks. get to that video wow. in a second but fireball is uh the liquor they serve in hell right that's the the shots they give when <laughs> what our briles are drinking when, yeah when yeah. beelzebub <laughs> wants to buy a shot for our briles and college freshman. that's jaeger <laughs> Is it Jaeger? Is it Peppermint Schnapps? Put it on the poll, Juju, at Lebitard Show. When the devil is buying a round of shots for your friends. Is for it, art. Is it Jaeger? Is it Fireball? Or is it Peppermint Schnapps? <laughs> Schnapps is bad, man. At, at Lebitard Show. But before we get to that video, I want to play some other video uh, from college football. James Franklin, the, the Penn State coach, who largely stays away from most controversies and has fixed their program coming off of what can be described as the worst scandal in the history of sports. It's in the conversation what Penn State did and what toppled and then killed Joe Paterno. Not the easiest thing to recover from. James Franklin has made Penn State matter like that. They're often undefeated at this time of the year. And people thought he stepped in it after his most recent press conference when he said this. Hey, good afternoon, James. Hey, Corey. A follow-up to what uh, you were just asked there about Drew. Is there a balance, though, between, hey, we need you to throw the ball deep no matter what. Just take a shot. Don't don't overthink it. Take a shot. We need to see it. We're going to call it. And, and we need you to get some confidence in doing this as opposed to even giving a young quarterback the chance to say, hey, just check it down if, if, if it's not there. I, I don't really understand what you're saying because we would never like I'm like my skin is curling when you say just drop back and chuck it deep no matter what like like that is like I, I don't even know what you're I don't know what you're saying it's like you're speaking like from just Mars. Just send a guy on a post pattern, take the shot, throw it. No matter receiver, what, give your receiver a chance to make a play on a ball, uh, even if he might be covered. 30 yards down the field, maybe you think he'll be open 45 yards down the field and, and like Godwin did or with Jahan or KJ. We, you, we've you, ne- we, like, like, I still don't, like, you're speaking Japanese. Like, like we, we have never done that. Just throw the ball up and maybe he'll be open and maybe he'll catch. Like, my skin is like, like, my, I'm, my, I'm, I'm, like you're making me uncomfortable. Like I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So okay. yeah, we we, just, we would not do that. We would never do that. 
We've never thought about doing that as a head coach, as an offensive coordinator, as a receivers coach. I coached the receivers. I didn't want them to do that. Um, so no, no, strong no. Like, yeah. He is disgusted. It was another no. I mean. Walked into the wrong press conference. That's how Washington plays. That's not how Penn State plays. That's not how James Franklin will ever play. I coached wide receivers, and I wouldn't want him to do that. We're going to grind it out. I mean, It is the kind of interview that Chris Cody would do where he's pressing but on. But just one time. Just chuck it up there, Coach. Come on. Every once in a while? A there, quick post? There, there is a big disagreement, though, between the way that James Franklin reacted with a certain allergy to what was being asked and an accusation that you're speaking a language I don't understand. <laughs> I am not fluent in the language that you speak. And all of us being like, hey, coach, yeah, hey, coach, that seems pretty valuable, the 15-yard pass interference penalty that you can get by just chucking it up there and asking your receiver to make a play. Hey, coach, have you ever played Madden? Yeah. You know, sometimes when it's like third and third, I'll just put a guy on a hot route, send him deep. You chuck it up, see what happens, huh, Coach? My no? skin is crawling at just the voice that you're making right now. He said I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. He clearly was though. That what your when you talk about these control freaks and how much preparation and strategy they put into the nine percent that they actually control, because once 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 the ball is snapped, it's a bunch of college kids not doing what you taught them to do. The thought of a kid throwing it 40 yards. Yes, that's too reckless. <laughs> Do you know how much easier it is just to power sweep it and try to be out toughing Indiana? It's my, I'm going to win eight games a year if, if I don't do that. I'm just going to beat Northwestern. Little fullback dive. I'm, I'm going to beat Northwestern by just being better than Northwestern in football. Stop with your hijinks. Stop. Stop. No one does that. Uh, you don't understand what you are the loosey goosiness of what you're suggesting to me, a college football repressed person who wants to out tough you six yards at a time. I just want to get into second and three. You understand? I don't, I'm good throwing it for you. The yards. things happening 40 yards downfield don't interest me. <laughs> It's scary over there. I like it where the big people are, where everyone is blocking, and I'm just going to Big Ten my way to the championship. They play Ohio State in two weeks. I'm excited to see how that goes. <laughs> you know how it's going to go. It's not going to happen 40 yards downfield. Not if James Franklin has anything to say His about it. His players aren't allowed to go 40 yards downfield. He cuts them. <laughs> they are not allowed. They start COVID testing for them. There are all sorts of protocols involved if you're more than 35 yards down the field. Exactly. Paperwork. Even with the wide receivers, when he was a wide receivers coach. He didn't want him doing that. No. Bureaucracy. Don't. <laughs> a ton of red tape. You have a table at the 35-yard mark. I have a COVID tent. Like a clinic. A bunch of physicians. Everybody is filling out forms. There are lines. Nobody wants to go down there. Plenty of room over here in the backfield if you want to just check down. <laughs> and it's why no one will want to see them in any of the final four games. They're not Wisconsin. No. It's probably no. not fair to do that to them. But there was a real allergy that James Franklin just expressed. You can only ask that question on Zoom. That guy was not in the room. You could tell by that audio. He was like, it was like over, or someone, I don't know how they're doing questions. That guy was not in the room. James Franklin was disgusted as if he were. Right. <laughs> he was bothered by his presence. I didn't even think that that was the James Franklin sound we were throwing it to because he stepped in it with Michigan fans when he was trying to talk about Indiana yesterday and scheduling stuff that people took as a shot to Michigan that he did not intend as a shot at Michigan. But people want the Penn State Michigan thing to matter so much that they want James Franklin to say he's allergic to that too by the way he's not going to say anything about Michigan he'll say he might say it about Indiana he's not going to say it about Michigan well I think we know why he said it he was cranky that that question put him in a real bad yeah. mood yep. so basically he called out Indiana for trying to get out of their series with Louisville because they want you to you know get as many wins as you can it's not about playing the yeah. good competition Michigan fans saw that and was like you are talking about us the shoe fit and that is really rude James and you can never beat us and then everyone was like, hey, man, that wasn't about you at all. That had literally nothing to do with And you. then everyone was okay with it. Indiana, yeah, was no like, problem. Indiana was like, you have a great point. We do not want to play Say whatever all. you want about Indiana. Nobody cares. It's okay. 
Let, let her rip, Franklin. No consequences. You say it about Harbaugh, though. And we're going to devour your face like piranha. Oh, you're talking about us, Indiana? You're you're talking about us? Oh, thanks, James. <laughs> yes, thanks. We'll take anything that we can get. I am a little concerned, Billy, and I don't know if you are concerned, because I believe of all of Stugatz's many full-blown addictions, he has now developed one to Lotto. Oh, I God. believe oh, that boy. he is every, every Specifically week. Specifically Powerball. Every week yeah. he comes in here, uh, I don't know what he's going to do you with it. He said it like it was a coffee drink. Lotto. <laughs> <laughs> lotto. <laughs> like Masterpiece Theater. Can I get a large lotto, please? <laughs> Too sweet and those. Are you addicted to it? Yes. What is happening here? You. What are you going to... Well, th- listen, the prize is $1.8 billion. And so I keep going to the Publix right by my house, and I'm, I'm starting to learn how the game is played. Before, I was just buying, like, random pig... Wait. You're tr- there's a strategy to this, you think? Well, there's multipliers. There's ways you could do four times the amount if you win. Not if it's one point eight billion. You're not walking out of there with eight billion dollars. You, you, the multiplier is not going to get you eight billion dollars. No, but what it does, Billy, is it takes a four dollar winning ticket and it turns it into like a sixteen dollar winning ticket. That's what I've learned. I've learned how to play the multipliers. You've but, learned how to lose your money more of it faster. Well, I don't know. Multiply if the losses. I'm not losing. I'm winning some money. I mean, I make an investment of $200. I go back, I get, you know, $122 back. Then you lost $80. You didn't win $120. Yeah, but I won the thrill of thinking this might be the night's. You know? There's nothing better than and walking me, out of that gas yes, station. Yeah, and for me, that is worth 80 bucks every single time. I love it, but here's a funny thing that happened. Game of what I'm, if. I'm going there so much that I started buying $50 scratch-offs and $25 scratch-offs. They're great. Now, I told my wife, here's what happened. She asked me, why are you spending so much money on this? And I said, when you buy $100 of Powerball tickets, you get a free scratch-off. That's what I told her. Eddie play. So I'm coming is that a lie? With, no. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> buying the way you said it, like I told her that. Just yeah. <laughs> Scratch-offs are a tricky game. They're a dirty game. You know that? You get that stuff all over the table. You got to wipe it off. What do you use, like a penny or something? I use a quarter. Standard quarter. Yeah. 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 It's great. Monopoly. I don't have Dan playing Powerball. I can't. I have played, but I can't express to you the sadness that came over me when you actually uttered the phrase, there's nothing better than walking out of that gas station. (laughs) There really is, Dan, nothing better than that feeling. If you have the, the tickets that in your That can't be true, Dan. Chris, Dan. The Chris. endless you possibilities. You don't Chris. like to play a game of what if? Chris, I am not here to entertain the possible hope of Stugatz's bad math. I'm winning. I spent $200. I oh. get back 122 Right. I mean, but $80 for that feeling. I mean, <laughs> This is a slippery slope, though, Stugatz. I heard you in the other room talking about, like, are you partnering with people on this? Because I wouldn't uh, trust you with this. Well, I have promised Frankie 50% of my winnings. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, that is Frankie ensuring that he's only responsible for 50% of the losses. There is no way. Do you realize the disaster? We will never see Stugatz again. What do you mean? Well, I, I asked him in the break. I go, so are you still splitting with Frankie? He goes, I am. And then privately said to me, he thinks. <laughs> so I don't know. what. Are you collecting money from Frankie? No, I am not collecting money from Frankie. When Frankie goes and gets the Powerball tickets for me, and he does that occasionally, then I cut him in, you know, 50-50. But I'm going to get these today because it's $1.8 billion And I have some numbers. I don't want to just do quick pick. I have some numbers I want to jot down, like 23. Would you guys be, 14, Jordan. Would you be kind enough to just look up for me? In order to win this amount of money, you have to have the one ticket that would be in one seat in how many football stadiums? If I gave you 100 football stadiums, how many football stadiums? What are the odds against you having the one ticket so that people understand? We're all typing into our computer right now, but I don't know what we're all typing. No, I'm guessing, I'm guessing there are— It's n- one in 292.2 million, so that is many football stadiums, Dan. Hmm. Imagine the math how bad Carry the one. your odds are when you have to have the one seat in the one stadium— of t- <laughs> however many stadiums it would take a lot to of arrive at, at those odds 
are insane. And I think everyone listening to this knows it doesn't mean people aren't fascinated by get rich quick. And it doesn't mean that education doesn't benefit from the fact that many people betting this don't have the proper math skills I have a bone to know to what a that. bad bet it is. I have a bone to pick with the fact that the lottery always tells you that they're raising money for education and make it seem like it's this charitable thing. Because I feel like then it should be a tax write-off. You know what I mean? Like My lottery tickets should all be taxed. It's a donation. If I'm donating to charity. Dan, do you think I'm walking out of that Publix thinking I have a 25% chance at winning? All right. Because you're right. I got 292.2 <laughs> million in my calculator right now. What are we saying is the average football stadium? Let's make it 80,000, 70,000. Okay. Divided by, I'm going to do 80. Divided by 80,000. Mm-hmm. Three, oh, uh, <laughs> 3,652. No. Stadiums. Uh, is that I it? doubt you're reading That's those numbers right. That's one. <laughs> That's great. I'm telling you, do the math. It checks out. 3,652. That's how many stadiums. Right. One one seat. That's a lot of stadiums, Dan. To it is point. a lot of it is a lot of stadiums. The uh, the the math would suggest that your hope is misguided and that you are throwing your money away. You have just as good a chance of <laughs> flushing it down the toilet and having a 1.8 billion dollar somehow come up from your septic system and uh, and be a winner there because he this this keeps carrying over at least in part because nobody's winning it he also that's the only it. reason it's carrying over he would have lost it if he bet on the orioles too though so <laughs> one way or another wow just throwing it away chris is right by the way 3600 stadiums checks out yeah way to go chris i didn't think that there would be anything that i would trust you less than reading but calculating <laughs> better odds calculate. than i thought i mean <laughs> Let's get to the video, please, of Lucy. And if you want to set this up, what are the highlights of what it is that we're about to uh, see and hear here, Lucy, from your trip? You wept in Texas. You were so moved by the energy of everything happening there that you admitted on God Bless Football that you were a uh, not necessarily a proud weeper, but you were willing to share that vulnerability with us. What was happening? College football felt so good that it moved you at your soul? It was just, it was before the game started and the stadium was full. Both marching bands were playing everyone was cheering and so happy at the same time and uh, yeah that all, seemed, that'd probably it was a little annoying. chaotic but it worked <laughs> every bevo was there oklahoma was shooting guns off everybody just felt so happy and you could just tell it was like such a community aspect that i started to cry kind of like a lot grateful crying oh my god just... I, it was so grateful and i was like i can't believe i'm here this is such a special <laughs> moment thank you dan for sending me to this this was so amazing so awesome. and then they kept shooting the guns off and i was like okay all the good feelings are gone <laughs> we will find out in a moment i assume some details on what the fried fireball tasted like but what can you tell us that doesn't spoil this audio I have felt bad for several days since. All right, let's uh, see. Wait, wait. Why is there a, a grid of death punishment in here? Explain that. Because I have felt felt bad. But like, what's the punishment that you had that you? She saying? selected it. Yeah, it's I called a carnival it. barker. Oh, yeah, yep. she just had to go eat carnival food. Okay. Mm. And I ate a lot of it, and right. I didn't enjoy it. Let's hear it. All right. So you guys kept asking me to eat fried food. I have no desire to do that. My bag is full of Pepto Bismol so much. But since I'm doing it, I brought a friend. I'm not going to do it alone. Billy Gill, if you're watching this, all this food is bad, actually, and it's terrible, and it should count as a grid of death punishment for me. The annoying thing about this place is I keep eating food like, oh, this is the most ridiculous thing. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be great content. And that's all good, and that's annoying. Um, am I supposed to, like, capture the food-eating noises? What, what feels right to you? I mean, let's see if there are some good chewing sounds. Oh, gross. It's good, right? Pizza. This is pizza. Erin is letting me have a bite of her turkey leg. I guess I'm just gonna you gotta go for it. There you go. You got some bone in there. I did. I did. <laughs> Pretty good. Thanks, Erin. They said fried fireball shot, but this is not. They this didn't fry it. the fireball itself. No, they fried it's... this thing and then they put. Everybody's looking around. All right, how do you guys think we should take this? Do we do we eat this first, or we do we take the shot and then eat it? That's what it is. What if we just yeah. like a fried cup? So did I thought it was gonna be something we're different. All, we're all disappointed, okay? <laughs> we don't. All right, Luca Garza, if you're seeing this, 
fine, you can finally tell people about what happened. In college, he came up and he bought me a shot, and I thought it was so cool because look, the, the big basketball star buying me a shot, so I said, okay. I have got to look super cool taking this fireball shot, and I took it really fast, and it came out of my nose, and he saw the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, there was cake. I said yes. <laughs> I don't like fireball. It right. happened. She ate something disgusting. That was Chilling. free. It was super gross. Well, the fire... It was just fireball with funnel cake in it. That's it. They I didn't, didn't fry the fireball. I thought... Oh. I would assume the, the fireball was fried. They haven't invented fire the... Or that would have been cool. It was literally just funnel cake in a fireball shot. So they cut something and put it in fireball. That's exactly they what They could have called it fryerball, too. Oh, that would have been good. I know drinking on the job is frowned upon, but you just made me take a fireball shot that was not fried, and it was gross. And my favorite team, Oklahoma, won today. And I actually just got a notification that I was up 10 points, and somehow our quarterback stat line is one for nine with an interception. So I need it. Do so you know who Stu Gotts is? Stu Gotts. Stu Stu? Stu gods. Stu with a with a T. No. <laughs> Damn the, oh my god. Am I that's, famous. Famous. that's big time right here. Yeah. This guy. Who are you with? That, that right here, right this here. show is big time. Yeah. How big time is the show? I'd say it's on a scale of one to ten, probably like an eight and a half. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Do you not pay attention or no? I mean no. So like how is it an eight and a half? Because I feel like if you're a sports person you know this show. That fried fireball shot, feel it in my stomach. Nasty. Shouldn't have got this. Should have gotten a water. Now, fried Oreos. You guys happy? All this fried food. I feel like sh I couldn't feel worse. So we're about to leave. But, but I have one last thing for you. I can't even think. I can't even get my words out. Is fried butter. Oh, my God. I don't... I really don't want to eat this. Honestly, that might have been the best thing I've had all day. For real. I wouldn't eat more of it, but... I dropped this on the ground, so... Perfect. What was the last thing that you had there? Fried butter. Oh. What? That's why I was gagging. I really did not want to eat the fried butter. It, you sound hammered at the end there. I was not feeling great. I was not feeling my best. Which one was worse? You did the Dan Campbell challenge of the equivalent oh. of 10 Red Bulls, oh. which is his routine coffee order in the morning. It's a couple of ventis with uh, espresso shots added as a bonus. Which was worse in terms of how you felt the following day? The following day, this one was worse than how I felt. The day of, definitely Dan Campbell. That was really painful. <laughs> this is his sat with me. I think I felt bad for like three days after this. Not good. <laughs> The flight is difficult under these circumstances. You're in a, a fried coma of some sort that I imagine is very often just Chris Cody's Sunday. We had to walk like an hour to the Uber, and I was like, I don't think I could. Or like, it was like a mile. I was like, I don't think I can do this. I, I, I can't keep going. It was not a pleasant experience. I learned, I would say, many years after the fact that Billy was hospitalized for a grid of death punishment. I sent of, you a picture from the uh, ER. Many years <laughs> after? I did not remember. I did the day of. I did not remember <laughs> you at all being in the hospital for eating what was it, like a quarter of a of a raw onion? Was it? No, it, I was like halfway through and then it all came back up. But yeah, I had to eat an onion and then I just kept vomiting and vomiting and vomiting and vomiting to the point of dehydration. <laughs> and then I had to go to the ER and then because I was dehydrated, I had dried up kidney stones, I guess, were floating around in there, and they had no place to go, so thank you. So then those came out, and then I was in the hospital for, I think, two, three days? It's quite an expensive bill, too, that the company didn't pick up. So you wonder why I don't like the grid of death. Wait, Whoa. There you go. Which like company? two grand. Don't blame that on me. Like we an worked, apple. We Whoa. worked at ESPN at the yeah, time. Yeah, no, I know. Mickey Mouse didn't, didn't cover that one. What do you mean? You didn't get... Out of pocket. But I mean, yeah. You did fun. not get health insurance because we... No, had I had health insurance, but there's a deductible that had to be met, and it was $2,000. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Not fun. Now you understand why sometimes I don't want to dress like Waldo. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're going to be... <laughs>
<laughs> kind of lost my enthusiasm there. <laughs> this is why the so this is why you run this all so poorly. You're I rule with an iron fist. I'll have you know. <laughs> yeah. That was a paid off punishment that we may or may not have made up this weekend. <laughs> Two thousand bucks. The number of times that you have had us know that you rule with an iron fist <laughs> while us never getting to actually know that you rule with an iron fist. I did not think that we could do much better than Chris Cody saying that there is no better feeling than walking out of a gas station. Oh. And he didn't even complete the thought. It didn't even have to do with Powerball or Lotto. It just had that sentence sitting there by itself that made me feel sad because I don't love the sentence. There is no better feeling than walking out of a gas station. But I think I have a sentence here that might be better, or at least the way this one sentence off. starts. This one starts with the word hog beat. Huh. H a w g, b e a t, hog beat. This is a internet site. I'm assuming a media outlet that covers Arkansas sports. Maybe, Dangerous game. Maybe it can be anything, right? Be careful. Uh, be careful with any Google searches <laughs> on hog beat. There might be some stuff How there. Spell hog. H a w g. Bobby right, Vitrino okay. pops up if you Don't. look it up. Don't put H O G. Uh, be careful with that. But that's the first word. How about and beat? Yeah. The words that come after that, that I was not expecting. Hogbeat has confirmed through a Freedom of Information Act request. <laughs> Jeremy just did a spit take. He just spit into. He has. Fake. <laughs> He has a liquid in his mouth that it's, it's still in his mouth, but he's holding it in with his hand because the phrase hog beat is a confirmed through a Freedom of Information Act request. F-O-I-A. That Arkansas offensive coordinator Dan Enos, his university email address, responded to multiple students who were criticizing him after the Texas A&M loss. <laughs> so he Hell go yeah. <laughs> so he goes to his computer, his work computer and students are ripping him as is the case often for anything related to a Dan Enos offense. And what is the back and forth? What did the Hogbeat Freedom of Information Act request reveal? <laughs> that uh, the, What a great the, sentence. It is. Thank you. I appreciate you getting to it late. But, yes, I thought it was a great sentence as well. I, I also am enjoying the journalism of how horrified Dan Enos has to be when he hears Hogbeat requested what? <laughs> Hogbeat did what they used, what a Freedom of Information Act to uh, to go through my work email address and see because I'm guessing he is a state paid employee in some way as college football programs are funded very often by the state. So you can do this. What were the back and forths that he was having with students? So a student found his email and emailed him, quote, I just wanted you to know that I'm available to call fourth downs for y'all if y'all need it. And y'all don't have to pay me millions. What a disgrace. <laughs> Dan Enos responds, what would you call? And he spelled you, just the letter U, three question marks there. I feel like that's important. But a harmless question. He is asking, yeah, what would question. you call? Right. He's basically saying, let me hear the play that you. He's that open to it. He's crowdsourcing. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So the student responds, a QB sneak. This isn't hard, Dan. And then Dan responds with gaps, defense, four laughing emojis. What a joke, four laughing emojis. Then he double emails him, you're so innovative, laughing emoji. Then the student said, I don't know if you know this, Dan, but a QB sneak with a 250-pound quarterback is hard to stop, even if you know yeah, it's coming. It also, but what you've been doing isn't working if you didn't notice. And then Dan responded, thanks, Robinson. You should have been a coach in about 17 exclamation oh, wow. points. <laughs> also, every time he says you, just the letter. I think that's very important. <laughs> what then, is – What? go ahead. Oh, it's, it's still going. They had a full back and forth. So then the student said, maybe you should stop trying to be innovative and get a first down. If I was a coach, I would have just been – I would have been just as effective as you are. And then Dan said, you still have time. Apply for some jobs. I'm sure you'll be great. 
And that is where our conversation ended. The double email is the part that's really standing out to me. Because it's one thing to reply to a student who's criticizing you. And, and the first couple of exchanges were pretty funny. But to double email shows a level of desperation, like some high school dude double texting a girl that he's into, like, please, 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 please just respond to me. Like, th what? what is Dan Enos feeling right now that he feels the need to double email a student that's criticizing not having a QB sneak? What is the perfect amount of exclamation points? When Four. You're, when you're really trying to hammer it. Four. Three. Ooh. Yeah, I mm. think three, clearly. I think, it, I think it really depends on the situation. Me, I'm an exclamation point girly. I'm always using them. So if I don't use them, it sends a message. Wow. Mm. But if you're really angry, how many are you using? None. Okay. And uh, they'll be like, oh my God, she just right. used a period. She is so mad. But <laughs> what do you use generally? What's the go-to Exclamation amount? point for every single thing. Like Usually two, when one? I, just one, two if I'm feeling special. Ooh. Usually I have to go back and look at my emails and say, okay, Lucy, yeah. you're an adult. You're a 25-year-old woman. Get rid of some of these exclamation points and I have to go back. Do you ever write a text where you exclamation point too many sentences and you're like let me figure out which sentence here i really pull want one back point. yeah all you the can't time go all your sentences with exclamation points so it's like you know what i'm gonna come out the gates a little softer period at the first sentence why can't you because you seem overly excited it just seems right. like too eager right. it doesn't and too, work yeah. yeah you gotta you gotta play cool mm -hmm. the biggest issue is in professional emails because i'm i'm someone that likes to exude like hey i'm i'm into what it is that i'm doing here i'm excited i'm excited what's your to intro to a work email hey all Right. Hey, hey all. Hey, y'all. Even y'all. I mean, y'all. Hey, y'all is all encompassing. That's not a work email. No, y'all is all in, a, a all encompassing. No. Yeah. Hey, y'all in a work email. No, y'all. Y'all. Yeah. No, you guys have to understand in in this in this modern day and age where we are trying to uh, de gender greetings. Y'all is a purpose purposeful all encompassing greeting. You can't say all. Mm. Hey, you can say all, but who says all? Me. What are you doing, walking into a Cracker Barrel? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I love a Cracker Barrel. Who doesn't love a Cracker Barrel? Howdy, y'all. The, the y'all with an apostrophe. I'm from the South, that, Dan. He didn't say I'm howdy. Yeah, he didn't say howdy. Might I well. mean, come on. Might as the, well. The y'all the y'all and the exclamation points, I don't. They, neither one of them give off a whole lot of professionalism. <laughs> I respond to every single one of your messages with the word y'all yeah. or an exclamation point <laughs> in it. Uh-huh. The Cracker Barrel rocking chairs, by the way, uh, thank you for your service. Over uh, uh, what? what? You shut the hell Overrated. up. Overrated. They're not comfortable. I want to throw something they're at not, you. They're not a good rocking chair. There's a reason they have 42 of them. You think they got top-of-the-line rocking chairs? <laughs> I mean, they're like, yeah, we're going to pay top dollar for all 47 of these it's out so here. so you have a comfortable seat it's to sit not. in while it's, you're waiting. They want you to think that, but it's not actually that comfortable. It is, though. I've sat nah, in it. full of it. <laughs> Dan agrees with me. They serve a purpose. They're there. You can rock. I mean, no one's going to buy them. If you buy a rocking chair from a Cracker Barrel, what are you doing? I'd a rather, thousand butts have been in that chair. I'd rather play that triangle game with the tees, the golf tees. You guys ever play that? Where you have to, like, jump? How are you yeah, at that fun. game? I'm terrible. Mm. I've, one time I think I got down to, like, three tees left. That's really bad. <laughs> no, that's good. not good. No. Oh. Two's good. Three is... Come on. Get, get, go get one of those things. I'll do it right now. <laughs> David Sampson put those rocking chairs in the umpire rooms at Marlins Park. <laughs> Billy, you are saying what of the person's life? You are comfortable. You are comfortable <laughs> judging someone's life, whether whether based on whether or not they have bought a rocking chair outside of Cracker Barrel that I think you said has had a thousand butts in it. At least a thousand butts per chair, right? Yeah. That's an easy. No one actually buys. Imagine going to a Cracker Barrel and then thinking, you know what? I need to take home. The rocking chair from outside that the general public sits on. And how am I going to take this? I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Take it apart. Put it on the top of my van. Like, how would you even get one of those home? I don't think anyone's ever gone there for breakfast and left with a rocking chair. Now, you go in there and you get all kinds of trinkets. I'm not going to disparage against the trinkets inside a Cracker Barrel. Those are the best. I had no idea you could buy those rocking chairs. Oh, yeah. You Some of them no have idea? a price tag on them, yeah. Wait, Billy, I'm confused, though. Do you find the chairs to be comfortable or not? I find them to serve a great purpose for the country. Mm -hmm. hmm. I did not know this was called the triangle peg jump game. It's what I would have guessed. <laughs> it is very accurately described. You're it's big, how, it's how I would. I, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm a big pegger. What kind of pegger would I be if not a big pegger? <laughs> Where do you start the hole? I go right in the middle. Sometimes I go middle right. When pegging? Yeah. 
with the <laughs> which hole do I start with? Yeah, I think you can go. That was the question. It depends yeah. on where you're going to jump first and how long you're going to last. You came out here and you immediately said that the rocking chair was overrated. Great take by the, me. <laughs> Lewis said in my ear, great take. Again with Lewis. Again with Lewis. He's and just building our confidence, I, Dan. I, no, I need to get control of what is happening here. <laughs> I am so He's like, keep roll. going. This is good. Good. Keep roll going. Go with an iron fist like me, Dan. Yeah. The pollutants that have saturated this show in contaminants that are led by Lewis speaking in everyone's ears and you guys being a bunch of parrots. <laughs> better than Danny, if we're going to be honest. I don't want to take shots at anyone. Not a Danny. compliment Whoa. to say better than Danny. I'm Danny? not being a parrot. Lewis has put like 3,000 things in my ear, and I haven't used one of them. <laughs> Earlier today, Lewis tried to, when we were talking about where the big people are with James Franklin, he tried to get me to sing, I want to be where the big people are. <laughs> I didn't do it. Do you shake them off all the time? Constantly. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Act the peg jumping. I would prefer <laughs> that whatever Lewis is saying in your ears, stay in your ears and not reach the microphones. <laughs> At the very, I, my greatest preference is that Lewis not be speaking in anyone's ears. But I'd like to never find out about it. The show is bad enough without his help. I don't need him saturating what it is that we're doing with an unoriginal take that's not even yours about rocking chairs outside no, of no, Cracker Barrel. No, no, what's my Barrel. take? He said it was a good take. Mm -hmm. He just oh. built me up. He was like, good take by you. Keep saying that. <laughs> You're being mean to Lewis. I mean, it's not nice. He told me to say that. He definitely didn't say in my ear just now, screw Dan. <laughs> Do you hate Lewis? Is that the person you hate? Did we find it? Oh, we wow. found it! Wow. Say it. Emily's off the hook. Say it. <laughs> no, she is not! <laughs> I do not hate Lewis. You hate Emily. Yeah, you hate Emily. We say all it, hate Dan. Emily. Say it. I don't. We hate, hate Emily. Emily. We hate Emily. <laughs> we hate Emily. Come on, Dan. Say it. I hate what Lewis has done to this show. Oh, wow. We hate what. Oh, sorry. <laughs> And I hate that I don't know when you are telling me your opinion about rocking chairs outside of Cracker Barrel that I don't know whether it's your opinion or not. I would like to have, I'm not being fooled enough by the internet as it stands. Now any opinion arriving from any direction, I don't know who it belongs to. I don't know if Billy is wearing a suit to tonight's game on doble cue a. La grande. I <laughs> <laughs> you always gotta say it. Come down that way. You have to. You better, Radio Mambi. You better. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah.